Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I'm working with Render Features in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. Render Features allow you to add code to the Universal Render Pipeline, which you can then use to create your own post-processing effects, and more. In part one of this series, I explain the basic structure of Render Features while making a desaturation effect. In this video, I'll create a more customizable Render Feature and manipulate it during runtime using a script. This project was made with Unity 2020.1.6 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0. Here's the simple desaturate feature written in the last video. In the create function, I construct a new material. If I could somehow pass a material to the feature, I could have it render any shader I wanted. Luckily, it's not too difficult to do. The split material feature runs with that idea. Like with mono behaviors, the inspector can expose variables of a renderer feature for you to edit. To get these fields to display, create a settings class containing the settings data. Make sure this class is marked serializable. Then create a settings instance variable with a serialized field attribute. Now then, I can pass the material to the renderer using its constructor. While we're at it, pass the feature name for debug purposes, as well as the material pass index. I decided to make the renderer pass event customizable, so set that here too. To accommodate these changes, add some arguments to the renderer pass constructor, as well as corresponding instance variables. Down here in execute, pass the material and the pass index to blit. Besides that, things are about the same here. Back in Unity, let's create a material for the shader. Select the renderer asset. Go ahead and delete the simple desaturate effect and add a new blit material feature. Set desaturate as the name. Expand the settings field and select your desaturate material. At first you'll see a black mesh. Change the pass index to zero to fix that. This problem occurs because Unity automatically creates extra passes for any shader made in the shader graph. These extra passes, though important for mesh geometry, are useless for a post-processing effect. They just draw a black rectangle to the screen. Setting the index to zero tells the feature to only render the first pass, which in shader graphs is always the code you created. Anyway, right now your skybox might still have some color. Set the rendering event to after post-processing and everything should be gray again. Now let's manipulate this effect from a script. I'd like to have the scene start desaturated and slowly regain its color when I press the spacebar. First, create a new mono behavior script called desaturate controller. Here's the finished script. You can copy it from the video description. Most of it's pretty simple, so I'll just explain the parts relevant to the renderer feature. First, we'll need a serialized field for the forward renderer data, which is the renderer asset as well as the feature name that we're looking for. These methods down here contain the magic. This tryGet feature method returns the renderer feature object. The renderer asset contains a list of all renderer features. From that, I just pick the first one with the name that we're looking for. Down here in update transition, I need to get the feature's material so I can update its saturation value. First, Cast the scriptable renderer feature to a blit material feature. The material property here I designed to return the material held in the feature settings. With that, I can change the underscore saturation variable in the material. As a side note, don't forget to set the saturation properties reference field in your graph. In end transition, I need to deactivate the feature so the scene retains its color. You can use set active to do that. Note that whenever you change a feature settings, you must tell the renderer asset that you did, so Unity will know to refresh it. The set dirty method accomplishes that. If you don't call set dirty, Unity will not deactivate the feature. It will just carry on thinking nothing has changed. Finally, in reset transition, I reverse all the changes I've made, getting things ready to transition again. 
In your scene, create a game object to contain the controller. Set the controller's properties in the inspector. Press play and test it out. Press the spacebar and voila. Not too shabby. So that's the basics on renderer features, but we've only scratched the surface of what they're capable of. With renderer features, you can create outlines, x-ray vision, depth fog, screenshot transitions, and more. I plan to cover a few of these, so stay tuned. Thanks everyone for watching. If this video was helpful, please leave a like. It tells YouTube that it should recommend this tutorial to others, and it really helps the channel. How do you plan to use renderer features in your game? Is there any topic you'd like me to make a video about? Thanks again for watching and make games.